Hi everybody, this is Leo Martin from Running Remote, and in today's video, I am going to teach you the six secrets for using Slack if you have a remote team. So first off, what is Slack? So Slack is a messaging app that basically evolved in 2012 out of Vancouver, Canada, I'm Canadian, which is why I know that. And not many people know that Slack is actually an acronym it stands for Searchable Log of All Communications and Knowledge. So it's a messaging app that you can use to get your entire team working on a particular project or a particular task. You can message back and forth about it, you can share files, you can collaborate. It's basically a message API, if that makes any sense. And I'm sure for a lot of you that are probably watching this video, you know what Slack is and uh, you probably use it every single day inside of your team. So tip number one is I know that Slack is a great productivity tool, but it's also a huge time suck. My friend Amir that actually runs a competitor to Slack and he runs the company called Doist, he says that asynchronous versus synchronous communication is one of the biggest challenges for remote teams and I tend to agree with him. So the amount of messages that you get throughout the day usually are quite helpful, but then also they end up interrupting what you're currently doing in that particular task. And it just pulls you out of what most productivity gurus will call flow state focus. So to be able to get yourself out of that, what I do is I remove a lot of the, these notifications that pop up on my desktop. So as an example, I don't get notifications about new messages that pop up in chats that I'm in. I only get notifications for direct messages, mentions, and a particular keyword. And this is the keyword that my entire team knows, which is Liam Emergency. So they literally put at Liam Emergency and they know that that's something that is really important that I should be able to get access to and have to look at immediately. I'll respond to those, but all other notifications I don't even get a notification on my computer or on my mobile and that's really important to make sure that you are focusing on your core work and not getting distracted by all these messages that are flying back and forth throughout your remote team. Tip number two, something that people don't really look at that often but I look at all the time is the channel directory. So we have about 103 people in our uh, main Slack group and those are just all of the employees and contractors that work inside of Time Doctor. One of the best things that you can do to be able to make sure that you're not messaging people and interrupting them is to find out whether they're online or they're offline. And one of the most effective ways to do that is to literally go into the channel directory and you can get a great overview of not only all the bios about everybody, where they're from, what they're doing, but you can find out whether they're actually actively at their computer or if they're inactive or if they're on mobile. So directory is a really great spot to be able to figure that out. Also for new employees that are just joining large scale remote teams, it's a great way to actually check out who is on the team. A lot of companies you'll end up only really understanding who's your direct report and some of the employees that you work with. And when you jump into that directory, you can actually see everybody's bio, what they do uh, inside of the company, and also where they're from, which is really cool for remote teams. So this next tip is something that maybe a few of you wouldn't necessarily agree with, but it's something that I live by, which is I automatically have all of my Slack channels disappear after I've clicked on them. And the reason why I do that, and I'll show you how to actually do that inside of the settings here, is for me, being able to make sure that you can actually stay focused and not necessarily get distracted by all of these different channels is critical. And if you see that those channels are actually on your Slack feed, then you'll end up clicking on them all the time. And that's something that I've recognized that I started doing, so I actually changed Slack so that the moment that I click on them and I scroll through all of the new messages, I automatically just get rid of that particular Slack channel after I've clicked off of it. Very useful tip if you want to not be super distracted by all of those Slack channels on your Slack deployment. Next tip is how to use Slack on mobile. Now, I know for me, uh, I really make sure that I have a very, and again, probably the trend of this entire video, is staying very focused on my current work. So notifications end up on your mobile all the time. It's actually 
quite difficult to be able to really streamline all your notifications on Slack Mobile. It just doesn't seem to be able to work as well on mobile as it does on their desktop app. So what I've done is I have an app called App Block. So you can go check it out. I'm sure if you just Google App Block, you'll be able to check it out. We probably also have that in the show notes down below. And what App Block does is it allows me to be able to lock out all notifications for a particular application throughout certain times of day or even when I hit certain geographic areas. So as an example, I have zero Slack notifications. Nothing gets through to me on the weekend. That's really important for me because I use my mobile phone as a personal device. I'm using it on the weekend. I'm hanging out with friends and family and I don't want to get all those types of notifications. So I make sure that all of that stuff is shut off. Another thing that I do, which is pretty cool, is I'll usually make sure that I can get access to Slack if I'm in the geographic area where I work, which is actually this place right here. So I make sure even on a weekend, if I'm in this geofence, that I actually will have notifications pushed to me. And then when I leave this geofence area, I won't get Slack notifications on my phone. And that's really important as well. If you are trying to stay focused and not necessarily distracted with all of these messages that pop up, particularly at three o'clock in the morning or on weekends when you should be focusing on friends and family as opposed to work. The other tip that I'm gonna give you is, I would say that you should really focus on your at activity. So when you go into your Slack desktop app in the top right hand corner, you'll have a little at icon. And what that will do is it will only show you stuff that has the at your name. So in my case, it's at Liam, and I see all of the messages that directly connect to me and then which channels they're associated with. And generally at this point, that's pretty much the only thing that I focus on unless someone literally sends me a at Liam emergency, in which case I'll read the entire context of that particular channel. Because for me, uh, a lot of this stuff is really not information that I directly need to know. And if I'm being completely honest, probably if you're sitting at home and you're using Slack, you probably have the same situation where a lot of these messages are not critical to the way that you operate inside of your business or the job that you have inside of your remote team. So just stick to the app activity on Slack and you'll be way more productive than you would have ever thought uh, using an app like Slack. So do you have any other suggestions or hacks for Slack? I would love to know. If you do have them, please put them down in the comments. And if you have any other questions, you can also ask them down below in the comments. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really like this video, why don't you subscribe to this channel? We do a lot of videos connected to how remote teams work. We run a company of 90 plus remote workers in 28 different countries all over the world. And remote teams is something that's near and dear to my heart. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.